Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. My dear brothers and my sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Many people today have sent me questions on WhatsApp or by phone regarding their children who are in public schools. And they are really worried because of the celebrations of the 25th of December. One or two, actually more than two people, have actually said that their children were asking when we are going to have the tree and is Santa going to bring me uh, gifts and things like that. So they are worried and panicking and all that kind of stuff. And uh, they're asking me now what it is that we should do to help us with this situation. And uh, it really surprises me to a great deal that a Muslim parent would actually take their child and put it in a non-Muslim school to be educated. What do you think? What kind of education is your child going to have? One day I saw a Muslim person and we were in the masjid performing Salat Maghrib or Isha. And I've met this brother so many times. Only one day that he has his two children, boys with him, and we are in the masjid. And I turned my face and I saw that the children had a school uniform And on their left side, just a little bit up on their heart, there was the insignia of a church with a big cross on it. And I flipped and I said, subhanAllah, what's this? So I went and spoke to the father and said, ya akhi, what is this? He goes, you know, what can we do there in school? I said, you're putting Muslim kids in a Catholic school to educate them? He goes, wallah, you know the situation. And to me, I was fuming like I was going to explode really. Because it's, okay, let me, let me put it in a context that you understand. Would you like your daughter to be a lesbian and your child to be a homosexual? You see how despicable that is? Now let me ask you a question. Why have you put them in a school that is dedicated to homosexual and lesbianism? Why? Would you like your child to be a thief and a liar? So why are you putting him or her in a school of thieves and liars? Would you like your child to minimize Islam and not become a good Muslim in the future? So my question to you is, why are you putting him in a school that doesn't teach Islam? Don't, don't buy me, look, don't sell me this story that, oh no, there is no education, it's secular, it's completely rubbish. Because you don't know what the agenda of the teacher is. Let me tell you the story of these couple ladies that called and they are all panicking. Why? Because In a nursery, and the other one in a school, and the other one in there, their children are being exposed to 25th December celebration, the trees and the decoration. Your kid is a human. He is full of emotions. Did you think that the emotions and the joy of the other children is not going to rub on them? Look at your child. If you, his friend or her friend has got a toy and your child doesn't have a toy, watch how your child becomes jealous. Now you put him in a school where everything, everything is pointing to that celebration. And you want your child, a little kid who doesn't know, understand nothing about emotions. You want them to actually feel okay, it's no big deal. Allah, if you think so, you, you must be a dreamer and not a good dreamer at all. Because listen to this hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in Al-Bukhari and Muslim. He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Kullukum ra'in, all of you are taking care of something, some people, of everything. A ra'i is someone who takes care of somebody from all angles. Nourishment, education, clothing, health, every single thing, it's a full care. Wa kullukum mas'oolun ar ra'iyati. And all of you, shall be questioned on the day of Al-Qiyamah on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him that authority of a riaya the welfare. Al-Imam ra'in wa mas'oolun ar-ra'iyatihi. The Imam is a welfare giver and he shall be asked on his people how he did with them. So this is for the governments and all that kind of stuff. Wal-Rajul ra'in and the man is a ra'in is a welfare giver for in his family, and he shall be asked on the day of Al-Qiyamah. And the woman is as well a welfare giver and maker in the house of her husband, like in her family. And she shall be asked on the day of Al-Qiyamah at her performance level. Well, Khadim, the worker, and this is in case you have a slave or whatever it is, and even if you work for somebody, Ra'in fi mali sayyidihi, you are good 
care taker in the wealth of his honor and he shall be asked about it on the day of judgment and this also includes if you work in a company and things like that and then he said sallallahu alaihi and all of you are responsible and you shall be asked on the day of qiyamah what you have done in that responsibility with the people you were responsible on and this is in al bukhari and muslim deal with it what are you going to tell allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of al qiyamah when he asks you why did you put your child in the school uh, the catholic school of england why did you send your child to the public school there were alternatives why didn't you do it i see a lot of uh, people they send the children to school from nine in the morning until three in the afternoon all english and with non-muslims and uh, look the child goes to school he sees how the school treats them and he sees how the muslims treat them and then i see people they send their children to muslim schools and the muslim schools they don't care they teach quran the child i've seen to my eyes when i was in this islamic center the children come in the afternoon after a long day uh, at school what do they come play with the phones and they are put in front of a teacher who is again uh, not properly educated or trained to deal with kids it's just someone who came from some arab countries with a complete dumb mentality and they try to teach the child how to recite the quran and i've seen kids lie play escape and do everything not to be there and given the opportunity they will chit chat and it's a complete chaos now this is actually i deliberately made this to make you feel bad because you should do the best for your child as a parent of eight children alhamdulillah they haven't been under my supervision and that of my ex-wife to any non-muslim school yes it was hard yes we worked hard yes we spent money yes 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 to everything but alhamdulillah today when i die i am very pleased with what i have done i taught them arabic they never ever were exposed to an english person that taught them that it is okay to be a hindu or it is okay to be a sikh or it is okay to be a jew or it is okay to be homosexual or it's okay to be an atheist they never were exposed to that and alhamdulillah i never ever had any issues with them with the celebration of the 25th of december in fact they've taught them so many times what it is all about and now they exactly know what is going out there and to them it's just another day however for those of you who have made the huge mistake of putting a muslim heart between the fingers of a non-muslim player to mess up your child as they please I'll give you a few hints to minimize the risks. But let me tell you, the rest of the year is not free of risks. And let me tell you something else. The British government is not a stupid government. They cannot curb Islam. They cannot fight it and they know. But you know what? They are doing a progressive work on the children of Islam. Watch the next generations how they're going to be to Islam. And watch today how the Muslims ladies are. Blue jeans and mini skirts and just wearing something on their head that is Islam. I look at the children nowadays. I see them in the street. A boyfriend and a girlfriend and it's okay. Because it's okay. Islam is not as tough as it is. Allah has made Christians and Jews and they are okay. Why is it only us Muslims? And give it two, three generations and Islam here will exactly be like the Bible in Judaism. Watch this space. But for you who have made this huge mistake, here are a few pointers for you to help you minimize the risk of your children being too much into the 25th of December. Actually, I deliberately made this to make you feel bad. Because you should do the best for your child. As a parent of eight children, alhamdulillah, they haven't been under my supervision and that of my ex-wife to any non-Muslim school. Yes, it was hard. Yes, we worked hard. Yes, we spent money. Yes, yes, yes to everything. But alhamdulillah, today when I die, I am very pleased with what I have done. I taught them Arabic. They never 
ever were exposed to an English person that told them that it is okay to be a Hindu or it is okay to be a Sikh or it is okay to be a Jew or it is okay to be homosexual or it's okay to be an atheist. They never were exposed to that. And Alhamdulillah, I never ever had any issues with them with the celebration of the 25th of December. In fact, I've taught them so many times what it is all about and now they exactly know what is going on out there and to them it's just another day. However, for those of you who have made the huge mistake of putting a Muslim heart between the fingers of a non-Muslim player to mess up your child as they please, I'll give you a few hints to minimize the risks. But let me tell you, the rest of the year is not free of risks. And let me tell you something else. The British government is not a stupid government. They cannot curb Islam. They cannot fight it, and they know. But you know what? They are doing a progressive work on the children of Islam. Watch the next generations, how they're going to be to Islam. And watch today how the Muslims' ladies are. Blue jeans and mini skirts and just wearing something on their head that is Islam. I look at the children nowadays. I see them in the street. A boyfriend and a girlfriend and it's okay. Because it's okay. Islam is not as tough as it is. Allah has made Christians and Jews and they are okay. Why is it only us Muslims? And give it two, three generations and Islam here will exactly be like the Bible in Judaism. Watch this space. But for you who have made this huge mistake, here are a few pointers for you to help you minimize the risk of your children being too much into the 25th of December. Well, number one, create a daily program with bedtime stories about the life of Isa salam in Islam. Tell them this is the time of the year where you tell them the version of Isa salam in Islam. How we regard this noble prophet? Do not tell him the life of our prophet sallallahu This is what you should be doing throughout the year. But in these days, tell him that Jesus or Isa salam is a noble prophet of Allah. And don't lie to him. Don't tell him Jesus was a Muslim. Because to a child mind, he will think that Jesus was Muslim like ass. Tell him that he was a subservient to the laws of Allah that Allah revealed unto him in his time. Again, Jesus is not as Muslim as you and I are today. He was Muslim on the laws that were revealed to him in that time there. So at bedtime, put him there and tell him story and tell her story and make them part of the story. Open the book of Allah. Read in Arabic. Don't make the mistake in reading in English to them. That is not Quran. Again, Allah I don't know what to tell you about this. But if you don't do enough these days, your child in the future is not going to be how you'd like them to be. And in the day of Qiyamah, you will be held responsible before them. And guess what? Every sin that they will commit later on, where you have not played a role today, you will get a share of it. So watch out. Take care of your children. So again, create a daily program with bedtime stories about the life of Isa alayhi salam as Islam says it. Number two, merge stories between the life of Rasulullah sallallahu and Isa when there is a similarity. When there is something where Jesus alayhi salam and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam experience the same experience, you tell them that story so that they link between the two prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, the miracles that Isa alayhi salam performed. And then you bring the same miracles or something close to that, and also tell him the story that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam spoke to Isa in his ascension in Al-Isra and Al-Uruj. Number three, explain to your child that there are many Christians, Jehovah Witnesses, some Eastern churches, the Coptic church in Egypt, and a lot of Christians around the world that do not believe in the 25th of December. Many of them don't celebrate it at all. And the reason being is that your child doesn't feel left over, like nobody, like he's the only child on earth that doesn't celebrate it. And believe me, in school, they will make him believe like that. Bear in mind, to the other people that follow other religions, like the Hindus, the Sikh, the Jews, or no, not the Jews, but the other people, they will play it safe because these people are looking for validations. So 
they will celebrate the 25th of December so that when it's the time of that year, of the year, where they celebrate these Hindus, for example, the Sikh, whatever it is, they celebrate their own celebrations, the schools will act with them. And this is a grave mistake. The schools will, on Eid day, make some decorations for the Muslims. And you think that is good, but actually that is part of the big plan to make sure that the child understands that, look, when Eid comes in, we call with it, we sport, we celebrate with you, no big deal. And then when comes the 25th December, you as a Muslim before your child are under pressure because you can't tell your child anything about the 25th of December and you're scared to death because you open your mouth. The school reports in that book and the government, the social services, the police will come to you. Subhanallah, do you really own your child? Food for thought. Anyway, so you explain to your child that the, there are many other people that do not celebrate the 25th of December. Number four, link their gifts, that the gift they give to each other, to our Eid. And for this, you need to do your share in the Eid days. You have to make sure that the Eid, every year, the two days of Eid, the kid spends something memorable. And on these Eid days, tell him. That we Muslims, we celebrate their Eid just like the non-Muslims, they celebrate on the 25th of December. Their gift there, they give them for the birth of a prophet. But today we give birth because Allah forgave us. We link our celebrations to Al-Akhirah. And explain to him that comes December, it should not affect them because that is a completely different ball game. So the building process starts earlier on. So if you want to build for the next 25th of December, you need to start this year from Ramadan and so on and so forth. And one other thing, you build the house, then you live in it. When was the last time you lived in a house, then built it? The same thing for your child. If you want your child not to fall in the net of somebody later on, like the 25th of December, what you want to do is build towards it now. Don't wait until it's December and then you start panicking like a chi head headless chicken. Do something now. So now, as I said, link the gift that 25th of December to our aid and also other opportunities. When you want to, when your child, subhanAllah, memorizes something from the Quran, buy them a gift. Do something, but always link it to something constructive in your mind. With our, with my children, every opportunity where I talk, I pinpoint always to something evil. So much so that I don't need to say it anymore. Uh, as, as, if I say, for example, uh, Isa alayhi salam was a great man, my child would just say, yeah, not like they celebrate only on December and they never ever remember it throughout the year. It's just they celebrate it. It's an opportunity for them to have a party. And me in my heart, I go, Alhamdulillah, the child is awake. Number five, in these days, when they give the school break, take a vacation with your child. Go Umrah, go to your family, go to a Muslim land. Try to erase these hard memories that they have been injected in your child at school in the preparation to the 25th of December. And alhamdulillah, you get, uh, I think, two weeks or something like that. So what this means is, why don't you plan an Umrah? And more importantly, if you have enough money, put your child in a Muslim school. What is a 5,000 uh, pounds a year? When you have bought a house and a mortgage, and when you have done, Allah Azim, some people's estate is so, I, I, but in any case, it's, some people are, have the knack to mess up their lives. Really, they do. And then they're just thinking like when they say Allah and uh, make a couple of dua, that's it, it's all sorted out. But it, there is a complete different ballgame. For the love of Allah, plan your child's future from now. Just like you are working day and night so that they get a degree for the university, help them get a degree for their akhirah, for the jannah. I see a lot of young people, either I have interacted with directly or they come to my classes or my talks, whatever, they are completely lost. He's got a degree from the university. He knows how to program on a computer. He is a project manager. He is in finance. He is, he is, he is, he is. And Islam absolutely appalling. Absolutely appalling. What have parents achieved to be proud of in front of Allah? What? Number six, occupy your children 
with fun activities every day, every weekend, and you must. So when your child is not at school, make sure that he is or she is preoccupied at, at home. Don't let them sit in front of the television and let them, don't let them spend too much time on the computers or tablets or phones. Do fun stuff with them, bond. This is the time of the year where you want to create that bond because at school they are a minority and they feel they are at a disadvantage. Help, help, help with the, uh, putting the balance straight. Number seven, watch some good Islamic movies and children-friendly animation movies. Uh, movies like Free Willy, something like Kung Fu Panda, uh, some uh, just divert their thoughts and because the kids in these days are really under a big pressure from school, from the environment, from the society. And also when they are outside there, it's only music and they only hear about the celebration. So do not add at home by pressurizing them into some uh, topics that they might find boring, especially in the style that it is delivered today or the pressure that they are being put under today. So please, please, please make sure that your child is taken care of at the visual uh, level to make sure that they are not left behind. As I said, watch some good Islamic movies with them. On weekends, number eight, invite other families, friends, and hold activities for children. Help them really have a community spirit in the weekend. Invite two, three, four families. I used to do that a lot. I used to invite every four to six weeks all my friends, and sometimes it's 10 families, and the house is, becomes a complete mess. Up sound does a hack and wreck and everything. But nonetheless, the next day, it's a, yes, it's big pressure on everyone to clean and things like that. But the, the feeling that that union with families brings is absolutely fantastic. My children never felt alone and we never felt as individuals. Did the other families invite us? Heck no. But when it comes, on my friends, I invited them probably, probably like 50 times, and they invited me maybe two, three times. I didn't do it because I was expecting. I did it because I wanted to be a active player in the community. And this is what you want to do in these days, especially in December, when all the world gangs up to celebrate the 25th of December. This is the time where every weekend, invite two, three families, have do plan with other people that you know that are going through the hard times. And as I said the other day, Muslims today are a nation of individuals. Each one is to him on herself and each and everyone is suffering to their own selves. Let's share the suffering. Invite other people and have uh, some activities for all kids. Let the children really explode. Have a trampoline, have games and, and don't make everything Islamic. Just teach, Islam is not like a super duper strict law. Just let them play, let them be children, especially if they are not uh, the age of puberty. Let them be like that. Yes, you can put Islam here and there slowly, but do not pressurize them. I've seen a lot of horrible things from people in these days. And that is number eight. Number nine, empathize. Allow your child to feel whatever emotions that comes up to them. Don't pressurize your child into hiding their emotions. It will not pay off at all. If your child is feeling that the minority at school and they are kind of like sad because a lot of kids are having gifts and they are having joy and they were in the red and animals and the kid cannot contribute, acknowledge that, that it is okay to feel the way you do because that is something everyone would love to have fun. It is okay to feel the way you do but there are sacrifices in this life. And again, you have to link it to what you do throughout the year. If you are a good parent that plans ahead and makes sure that the child's needs are covered throughout the year, you shouldn't have too much problems these days. But if you are one of these uh, too busy of a parent and putting the child at school is actually a way of to getting rid of them so that you can have some uh, freedom and liberty. And when they come sc from school, you actually don't care much about what happens. Allah helps you with these days because they're going to be extremely tough on you and a huge responsibility on the day of al qiyamah Again, empathize with them and let them feel and tell them it is absolutely okay to feel what it is that they feel and that they shouldn't be ashamed of or scared for being punished because kids will often lead us. 
with the questions they ask. If they ask you, why, the Arab, why do they have a lot of gifts? Pay attention, it's because you're not giving them gifts. If your child was receiving enough gifts, they, that gift's point would not occupy their mind. If, for example, they wear nice clothes, they will ask you, why do they wear those nice clothes? Make sure that you care for your children's clothes and you want to make sure that when you give them clothes to link it to the 25th of December before you take your child and put him in a Muslim and an appropriate school. Number 10, explain to your children that the, the 25th of December celebration is driven by commercialism, that it is a commercial period of the year. It's got nothing to do with their religion. If there was no business, believe me, ain't nobody that's going to celebrate that thing. And also explain to them that many, many, many people hate it this time of the year because they lose a lot of money about it. Tell them how hard and difficult it is, for example, for a father for one year to buy, and before it used to be any gifts. Nowadays, the children put forth what they want to receive. And uh, when you have five children and each one of them wants an iPhone or a tablet or a PlayStation 4, then you know that the bill can yield in thousands. I personally, when I used to work with them, this is one of the most depressing periods of the year, but they cannot escape. Keep it. So explain to your children that unlike uh, us Muslims, <laughs> well, a lot of them sometimes it's, it's difficult to lie because Muslims also are turning our Islamic rituals into a commercial thing. But anyway, also as you teach your children, and this is number 11, as you teach your child about the 25th of December, tell him that it is nowhere mentioned in the Bible. This is very obvious, maybe probably yourself you don't know it, but this is very obvious, but in nowhere, and nobody gives you anywhere in the Bible where it says the 25th of December is a celebration of the birth of Isa alayhi salam, son of Mary, but nobody gives it a second thought, and it is a lie. Give your child the, the, the idea of telling him, if someone asks you when you are born, and you tell him, for example, let's say just for argument's sake, that they are born on the 1st of July. If someone tells you, I was born on the 7th of July, we consider that as a lie, and it is haram to lie. Tell them that the church knows that Isa a.s. was not born on the 25th of December, that the Christian world knows that Isa a.s. was not born on the 25th of December, and there are some evidences also that, for example, the Eastern churches, like in the Greek church and the Egyptian Coptic church and a few other churches, they actually celebrated in January, uh, far beyond what the Christian do here in the West. So explain to them that these dates are fake and they are a lie. So that your child starts making a difference between here and there. And don't be, look, don't be scared what the school might feel. Because a lot of you are scared from the school. You don't want to speak about so many things because you're scared of the school taking your children away. Do you think the British government gives your child benefit just for you? They gave you the child benefit is to tell you, take care of our children because we'll get them back from you when they are in the age of puberty. And watch where the children, Muslim children are today in state of confusion between what the school taught them and what the family taught them. Tons upon tons of people out there are confused and maybe you are one of them because you grew up in a world, too contradictory world. And when your children come, what are you going to do? You're going to put them in an English school and you wouldn't care and your child gradually starts moving towards this culture until probably a couple of generations from now, your children will all be English. And then again, you prepare for the questioning with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you have been the seed. In the 12, explain to your child that Isa alayhi salam, as I said in number 11, that he was not mentioned in the Bible, and that also his birthday is not in the 25th of December, and it is a pagan celebration. Go learn about pagans, what they believe in. Jehovah Witnesses do not celebrate that, and many other people. So you want to educate your child that it is okay to be the odd one out at school and not celebrating because you are not alone. And if you can withdraw your child from school, by all means, go ahead and do it. Please, 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 please do sit down with your child and read from the encyclopedias, the English encyclopedia. They will tell you a lot of the truth that the general public do not want to know. But once you tell it to your child, the kid will understand that uh, 
out there is really a world of deceit and people are celebrating something that doesn't exist. Again, number 14, there are many Christians that say that Allah or God condemns using pagan customs to worship him. And since this 25th of December is a religious celebration, it would be a good idea for your child to know that a lot of the Christians and kids out there don't actually read at all their book, unlike us Muslims. You have to let your child know that him being a Muslim is the best thing that has happened to him. Obviously, you have to believe that yourself in your heart. But if you are just a hot air balloon, hey, what your child is going to be? Oh, the hot air balloon. Make sure you take what it takes to be a good Muslim yourself. Your child must see Islam in yourself. Don't beat around the bush. Tell your child about your religion. We are Muslims and we do not celebrate these things. It is haram in our religion. Don't try to say it nicely. Don't sugarcoat it. Don't emotionalize these kind of things. It's, it's sad today. People, uh, they, for an innovation, for a bid, for something haram, oh, it's okay to do it, you know, it's no big problem. Really? Is this how it is? Well, actually, it's not. Don't sugarcoat, don't emotionally coat things. Make sure that what you are telling your child works with what you are doing at home. So if at home you are believing that this is what Islam should be and the kid sees it at home, the child will not have a problem. They'll be grounded. But if at home you are wishy-washy with the child then or with your family, then know you have failed your mission. And on the day of al qiyamah I swear to Allah, you'll be asked for everything you have done, including the children, the trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. So for a Muslim to put their children in a Catholic school or Church of England school, and the child wears a cross that says Allah has got a son, and then you tell him, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ and he recites the Quran, <laughs> what kind of parent? This is a monster parents that you are. Wallah, you are a monster parent that is really, really messing up your children's future. Rasulullah has said every single child comes out with something in his heart that points him to Allah. And his parents are the ones to make that belief go to worship Christianity or Judaism. How come your child comes out equipped with that element and it is you who is Christianizing him? and is Jewish in him, if that is the term. Why all this? Is that they get a doctorate or the Nobel Prize and to be recognized in this world and you mess up their future. Do you think your child is going to forgive you on the day of al Qiyamah? It's not going to happen. So my dear brothers and my sisters, please, please, please be extremely serious and take your children's education to heart. Don't mess them up. Because on the day of Al Qiyamah, even if they become successful in this life and they buy you a house and they buy you a car, on the day of Al Qiyamah is another whole set of ugly questioning awaiting you. Get ready for it. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that these points here will help you. At least if you pick up a point or two and concentrate on it, you will get bi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala something to minimize the damage that could be done to your child. Again, from the whole heart, I really, really, really encourage you, advise you, push you, uh, demand you, command you, whatever it is to make you do something. Put your child in a Muslim school. If you don't have enough money, work to get enough money to educate your children and go to the qabr, go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with an excuse saying, Ya Allah, I worked my tail off so that my children get a tawheed only, shirk free education. And watch how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will thank you for that. Again, this is your brother Abdul Salam ibn Ammar. If you have any questions or you want me to speak about something or suggestion or anything, send me an email at islampeptalk at gmail.com. And to join my WhatsApp group, please send me a message to 78 And Allah knows more and Allah helps us all. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyina Muhammad subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته